welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. Um, today is the first official video in the what I'm calling Wicca 301 series of videos. And 301 is what you would call the practitioner level. Um, 101 is like an initiate. 201 had information that was typical of a dedicant where you're learning the craft and, and honing your skills. 301 as a practitioner means that you are getting more and more comfortable in your craft and in your practice. So one of the things um, that this series is going to focus on is the development of your intuition your psychic abilities and your divination skills through introducing you to different types of divination like tarot, runes, scrying, uh, the use of a pendulum or use of a spirit board. So one of the things is that as you go through the learning process and even though I've been doing you know, I've been a practicing witch for over 15 years now. I still learn something new every day. So when I say that you're learning your craft, please don't, you know, think that I'm belittling anything that you're doing because, you know, if you learn something new every day, I'm always a student. There's always more for me to learn, even though I'm, tr I'm officially trained to a high priestess level and I've been practicing for a very long time. As you go through your practice and become more comfortable in your what I call skin as a witch or Wiccan, um, you, you start really relying on your intuition to guide you through making your spells, picking out the ingredients, picking your correspondences, gemstones. Your intuition leads you to, you know, herbs, oils, gemstones, um, gods, goddesses that you end up developing a very deep connection with, okay? So, you know, please don't take it as any kind of slander when I say, you know, as you're learning your craft because I've been doing this for, like I said, 15 years. I'm still learning my craft because there's always something more for me to learn. Your intuition plays a key part in your practice. As I said, it guides you to the ingredients for, let's say, incense that you're making up or a ritual bath. It guides you in preparing healing, you know, um, salves or tinctures. It guides you through divination. Your intuition also alerts you to energy that is what I call off. That it's outside the norm of your personal energy and the energy of your home or your space. And intuition is that little inner voice, okay? It's that voice inside you that tells you that something is off, that something is a little bit afoot. It's something that you know instinctively without using any kind of conscious reasoning to guide you to this. Intuitive warnings often come from your guardians. You to use extrasensory perception or ESP. And ESP helps you identify information that is hidden to most people. Um, everyone is born with psychic ability, there are very small percentages of people who make the effort to learn how to use that ability and to tap into it. Um, the, these abilities can be developed and controlled through 
the exercise of those abilities. And it's very, very important if you are what I call um, a sensitive to learn how to control the flow of information. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, there are many types of psychic abilities and they're referred to as the clairs, okay, C-L-A-I-R-S. And <clears throat> that allows you to use abilities that are far beyond um, your typical sensory abilities, your conscious thought abilities, okay? It's beyond your ability to see, hear, feel, taste, or smell, okay? Psychic ability allows you to access information from not only what's going on right now, you know, from someone, if you're trying to read somebody, what's going on in their life right now, something that has gone on in the past, or something that will occur in the future. However, psychic abilities do not include the ability to communicate with spirit. In other words, with those souls who have passed on. And before you go off in the, com in the comment section at that statement, just wait a minute until I clarify with a little bit. Now, all there is a part of psychic abilities that is called mediumship. And mediums can communicate with spirit, okay? Those are the souls that have passed away it's ghosts, you know, that people call it. Um, it can also be communicating with other types of entities like PK, psychokinetic entities, elementals. Um, you may have the ability to communicate with what I call demons. Others call, you know, primordial spirits. Um, because my, my Christian frame of, you know, reference um, is hard for me to, to not think in that kind of vernacular. And mediums use a means of divination often, like spirit boards and things like that, to help focus energy to communicate with spirit, okay? Mediums are psychics. In other words, they have that extrasensory perception and have access to the past, the present, and the future, but they also can communicate with spirit. All mediums are psychics, but not all psychics are mediums, okay? So that's why you hear somebody say, I'm a medium or I'm a psychic medium. Um, you know, psychic medium is kind of redundant because as I said, all mediums are psychics. So those of you that were getting ready to, to nail me in the comment section for, you know, that, that comment that psychics aren't mediums, that's what I mean, okay? Let's talk about the clairs. And your psychic abilities are guided along by your guardians, your spirit gods, and your masters, okay? Next week's, uh, next week's video is going to explain your guardians, your gods, and your masters, okay? And those extrasensory abilities are divided into the clairs, okay? Clairvoyance is clear seeing. Voy means see, okay? It's like watching a little movie play in your head um, it could be pictures that flash into your head. It can be a symbol that flashes into your, your head. It can be a place on a map. It can be a number. It can be a color. You can also get a full-blown premonition of something that is going to happen. Many years ago, when I was first really starting to embrace my abilities because I had tamped them down for so long because um, of societal kind of expectations. 
So I had kind of put my abilities on ice, so to speak, and I started to really embrace them. And I will never forget this. It was one of the first, you know, like really big premonitions that I had after I started really working on my abilities. And um, I dreamed I was like on a beach and there was an explosion. There was a like an airport right there that jutted out into the sea. And there were, you know, like palm trees and stuff like that. And there was a big explosion in the air right after a plane had taken off. And as the people were falling from the sky, I thought they were speaking something like German. And within, I want to say about 30 days, there was a rather large Dutch air um, plane that blew up in as on takeoff from Tripoli and um, I remember that so vividly because I was you know talking about it to my better half and I said it was so real you know that I could literally see people falling out of the sky and I thought they were speaking German they were speaking Dutch it, it was a plane full of German and Dutch people so that's what I'm talking about for clairvoyance where you have that scene play in your head where it is so vivid okay clairsentience is clear feeling okay it's feelings it's emotions and it's physical sensations think of impacts this is the empath ability and I have found over the years that empaths have an extremely hard time shielding and protecting themselves from just the onslaught okay of you know walking through a crowd and being able to feel everybody's emotions high or low okay clear audience is clear hearing okay this is that you know a voice that you can hear um it's that little voice in your head telling you something it does not pertain to spirit voices that can be heard out loud okay it does pertain to mediums who can hear names words phrases but it's not out loud it's inside inside the mind okay inside the subconscious I am also a paranormal investigator and there are many times where we have been you know investigating a business or a private residence where we can be two rooms away and we can hear an audible verbal response to a question that we asked okay so you can hear spirit out loud all right clear cognizance is clear knowing this is an inner knowing this is something you cannot explain why you have this you know inkling of what you're picking up for instance like you know you should not trust someone or to know not to get on that airplane okay on 9 11 there were numerous accounts of claircognizance of people who knew that they should not get on flights or they just ended up coming into work late and if they had been on the flight or had come to work on time they would have perished in the towers okay it's also a friend of mine who is well he's now retired from FDNY took 9-11 off this was the first time he knew he had to be at a function at his daughter's school there was some kind of like recital or something like that um, and it was the first time he had ever taken off from the firehouse 
but he knew he just knew he needed to be at the school and it, to go to that um, recital and his company was in Midtown Manhattan everybody from his shift and his unit perished on 9-11 including the guy that took his place on the rig if he hadn't known that he needed to be at his daughter's school that day he probably would have perished in the terrorist attack those are the things that i'm trying to you know give you and also another example is when someone who's driving the car says oh you guys have your seatbelts on you know make sure you're buckled up and then boom you're in a, a car wreck you know but for some reason that driver knew something was going to happen but they couldn't explain why now some of the less common those are the most common players that people have less common are the following is clear alliance and that is clear smelling okay that is smelling something that is outside the normal range of your smell okay that you should not have an environmental explanation for the smell that you're smelling like when my dad comes around, I can smell Salem cigarettes. I haven't smoked in well over 20 years, almost 30 years now. And when my mother comes around, I either smell White Shoulder, Chantilly, or Shalimar. Those were the three um, perfumes that she wore. And my sister, when she comes around, I smell Oscar de la Renta, or I smell Chanel Number no. Five, or I smell So by um, So de la Renta by Oscar de la Renta. So that's the you you know the smelling. Okay, it can also be you know if Grandma was known for her Sunday you know as they call it up north in in New York Sunday gravy. In other words, her Sunday pasta sauce. And those big Italian meals and for all of a sudden you start smelling grandma's you know Sunday gravy that pasta sauce that homemade marinara that she made and you're not making it that's grandma coming around okay so it can be any kind of smell that is outside the normal explanation it can also be very negative entities like uh, a smell of rotting flesh or sulfur is usually affiliated with a negative spirit or a demon. There's also clear gustans, and that's clear tasting, like um, having the taste of chocolate ice cream in your mouth for no reason, or, you know, like blood in your mouth but there's no, you know, blood in your mouth, no reason for you to, to taste that. And that's because spirit is usually giving you a sign, okay? Now, communicating with spirit. Mediums often experience many, more than one, or even all of the clairs when they communicate with spirit. Certain spirits have the ability to communicate in, in different ways. A spirit may find it's easier to make you feel something, like you feel what they experienced in their death state, or you feel um, like being punched or you know having a slap to the head or something like that it can also you know with the taste the smell everything like that and it's very very daunting especially when you're first developing your abilities to be able to decode what the heck spirit is trying to tell you and for you to decode what 
your guides and your your guardians are sending to you like if they're giving you a premonition of something calm you have to learn how to decode the information and that's one of the most frustrating things um, that you can experience as a psychic and when I was going through my um, priestess level my 401 level of training there was a young lady in my class quite a bit younger than me I mean she was barely out of college I was in my 40s I was literally old enough to be her mother and she was very closed off and one of those people who is naturally distrustful of other people she keeps at, she kept everybody at a distance and my HP knew that because I have that motherly kind of instinct and I'm the same way public safety I don't I don't trust a lot of people my inner circle is extremely small there aren't many people that I allow to come into my inner circle okay and she paired me with this young lady and I asked her I said do you want me to go first to try and receive stuff that you're sending me and she said yeah I don't think I can do this and I was like you can do it and if you want me to stop I'll stop at any time and the minute that I grabbed her hand a movie like a, a little clip of my parents jitterbugging or swing dancing popped in my head and I'm like what in the hell my parents would have no more in my frame of reference jitterbugged or done swing dancing than the man in the moon and however my parents were born right before the twin the depression the american depression or right at the beginning of the american depression they were teenagers during world war ii okay when swing dancing and jitterbugging was very prominent and when I said that to this young lady I said for some reason I'm seeing a picture of my parents jitterbugging she got this biggest smile on her face and she's like nobody knows this but I do swing dancing on the weekends with my fiance she's like no one over here would know that and that made her immediately relax and then she was you know then more comfortable sending me additional information and letting me see additional things about her without making her feel uncomfortable and then when I transmitted to her she was able to then pick up on things that I allowed her to see about me. My guides helped me intuitively know how to make her feel more comfortable through the transfer of our energy. And spirit helped me, my parents helped me in gaining some insight into her life that no one there would be no reason why I would be able to know this about her so I want to caution everyone that when you really start to try and develop your abilities that you work with inanimate objects first okay work with residual energy okay that's a lot easier than trying to read you know a person okay um, you can even make like a trip if you like I live in Virginia and there are Civil War and Revolutionary War battlefields all over the place so when I was really starting to um, connect with spirit and develop as a medium I went to the battlefield to Manassas battlefield and then let 
the spirits there guide me and show me the residual energy and even going up to Gettysburg the same thing you know to pick up the residual energy from those battles it's very frustrating but it's a lot easier for you to develop the con the control to be able to number one decipher what's being sent to you and number two to control the flow and number three to not let too much through okay because that can really screw you up so you know one of the good things you can do go outside and hug a tree see what that tree can tell you it's been standing there for decades possibly even hundreds of years it's seen a lot of things go on and when I say hug a tree you know why I say that because you can instantly tap into the energy that earth energy from that tree it's going to help keep you grounded and it's going to send you residual energy from things that it has experienced during its lifetime okay now ethics I want to go into ethics with you guys number one don't ever read someone without their permission it's rude and it's what I call psychic rape okay it's not nice don't do that and I know that empaths have such a hard time especially when they're they've never um, been able or taken they haven't been able to control the flow of information where you can walk through a crowd and they can't shield correctly and they're just overcome from everybody around them I'm talking about you making a conscious effort to get into someone's psyche and snoop around it's not cool okay two the very first thing I do when I do a tarot card reading or a psychic reading for anyone is ask them how much do you want to know do you want to know the good the bad the ugly the everything I will give it to you unfiltered and I will give it to you as it comes to me and a lot of times people say yes I want it that way some people will say well if you're going to tell me how I die no I don't want to know that and I can completely respect that another thing is when you are reading for someone I make an effort to not make the information sting or hurt so much I ask them if I can send them some like calming healing energy and then I try to present the information in a way that's not just a slap okay sometimes people need the slap okay but when I'm talking to someone let's say whose child was born prematurely and they're asking me is my baby going to live and when I see yes your child is going to live but I also see 30 surgeries I see you know them being on sleep apnea monitors and on CPAP and you know tubes and ventilators and all that kind of stuff and a long time in the NICU um, in the unit United States NICU is the neo neonatal intensive care unit I don't know what they're called outside of the US but that's what they're called in the US and I try and say something like your child is going to live they're going to survive but they're going to have a very long difficult road ahead of them and then I'll go in you know and and try and present the information in a way that's not just it's going to be in the NICU and you know blah 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 and you're going to think he's you know died four times over and they br they brought him back four different times I'm not going to be that blunt about it okay think about what 
think about the other person that you're reading for and have a little consideration for their feelings. Sometimes, however, you need to slap the snot out of them with exactly what spirit is telling them, okay? Another thing is when you are reading someone, most people have trauma that they have boxed up, put it on a shelf inside a room with a locked door. If there is something like a locked door or something that does not want to immediately reveal itself to you as you are reading them, leave it alone. Respect that. Don't go delving into parts of their psyche where you're not welcome. And what I do when I, re when I read somebody and I run into this, you know, wall or door or this box that doesn't want to open, I tell them, listen, I'm seeing a box or I'm seeing a door that's locked. And behind it, I know there are some emotions and things, experiences that you have closed off. Will you open the door for me? Or do you want me to leave them alone? And then whatever they choose to do, if they say, open the door, then I'll delve in. If they say, please leave it alone, then I leave it alone. You have to respect the person that you're reading for. Um, one of the most important things you have to do as a psychic or a medium is immediately learn how to one protect yourself and shield yourself and two control the flow of information the very first thing that i did when i started getting very heavily into developing as i said you know it's very very important to shield and protect yourself and to control the flow of information especially when you're first starting out um, I'm going to link a meditation called a psychic shield meditation. I would wholeheartedly um, encourage you to use that meditation every day. It's what I call putting on my armor, okay? I do this really quick meditation right when I get up where I'm closed off to spirit in general, but I'm still open to my guardians and my guides, okay? If you fail to control and protect yourself, if you don't control the flow of information, you're going to burn out. You're going to make yourself sick. I cannot tell you how many people I have seen destroy their health because they didn't want to take the time to learn how to master controlling the flow of information okay eventually what happens is before you destroy yourself through complete and utter burnout your gods and your masters will completely shut you down okay and then you won't get any information at all so and this is particularly important for empaths those people who feel and pick up on everybody's emotions, you have got to protect yourself. I'm gonna say, you need like a psychic condom every day, okay? Now, there's also an issue when you have abilities and you're first coming into them and learning how to control them, you are open, people with abilities are a beacon for spirit okay whether you're a medium or whether you're a psychic okay you're also um open to energy i call them energy vampires or psychic vampires um because they can sense your out of control energy and abilities and then they will tap into your aura and literally suck you dry. And you, you have the 
issue that your abilities uh, are dampened down or completely sucked off of you, okay? To protect yourself from what I call a psychic attack, especially when you're doing exercises to try and develop your abilities, you need to, one, cast a circle and to use um, gemstones to help protect you and then two, to help increase your psychic ability. Um, I usually have um, some gemstones on me at all times um, to protect from psychic, psychic attack. Here are the gemstones. Amethyst, tiger's eye, hematite, Black tourmaline is my go-to. Lapis lazuli, garnet, labradorite, jet. Jet is wonderful for impasse, okay? However, if you buy antique jet jewelry, be aware that most jet jewelry or a lot of jet jewelry from the Victorian era were mourning pieces, as in mourning someone who died. And so you will pick up on that grief from the residual energy, okay? So don't buy old stuff when you're first um, starting out. Get a piece of jewelry that's new or relatively new um, that you can easily cleanse because it's hard to get rid of all the residual energy of a piece of mourning jewelry, okay? Fluorite is great. It's also great to protect against black magic and curses, okay? Blue kyanite, peridot, peridot just happens to be my birthstone. I wear it almost every day. Um, sugar light is wonderful for psychic shielding okay until you learn how to like put on your armor and get really confident in controlling the flow of information sugar light can help you out a lot and the final one is blue chalcedony and that's great against hexes too now there are gemstones that help you increase your psychic abilities or help you to develop them and learn how to control them the first one is azurite, amethyst, clear quartz, iolite, bloodstone. Bloodstone also helps keep you grounded, okay? Fluorite. Fluorite is also great to help balance your chakras. Your third eye chakra is what is affiliated with your intuition and your abilities as well as your crown chakra being your connection to the divine okay and to the universal energy uh, another one is turquoise this is particularly good to develop clairaudience and clairvoyance chrysocolla calcite carnelian carnelian aids you in helping you learn to trust your intuition, to learn to that, uh, to listen to the inner voice. Emerald, uh, Moonstone, which is another one of my favorites, and Celestite, herbs and resins that can help protect you from psychic attack. Are acacia, bay, frankincense, mugwort and mugwort is particularly necessary if you are traveling to the astral plane and i will get more into the astral plane in another video because this one's already hella long and you know i don't want to be sitting here and you don't you won't watch a two or three hour video um myrrh is another one rose thyme willow and willow is particularly good for protecting you when you are doing divination if you're you know choose to do like spirit boards or anything like that willow can help protect you okay and yarrow yarrow is the last one 
herbs and resins to help you increase your psychic ability okay to kind of raise the vibrations anise anise raises your vibration and it's also great for astral travel so if you are doing any kind of astral work do a blend of mugwort and anise so that you will be protected and you will be more receptive to receiving the information you're supposed to get the next one is cinnamon cedar celery honeysuckle and that is especially good for developing clairvoyance lemongrass lilac blossom and that's especially good for doing uh, past live regression and clairvoyance lotus mugwort is also great for clairvoyance and sandalwood as i said um there will be a link to like all of my notes down in the description box there will also be links to a psychic shield meditation the next video in this series is going to be on your spirit guides and your masters and your guardians um then we're going to start into um and I may touch on spirit animals in the next video. It's going to depend on how long the video runs. Um, and then I'm also going to start in on actual exercises to help you develop and tap into your abilities. Um, that's going to be more when I start working, um, doing videos like on the astral plane and what that means. We're going to go into tarot for about three or four videos, um, probably, well, maybe, maybe five videos, depending on how long it takes. Uh, there's going to be a, probably one or two on Elder Fufark runes. There's probably going to be one on spirit boards pen, and pendulums. And then there's going to be one on the different types of scrying. So that should take us pretty well full circle and that will lead us through the holidays and into the new year. Um, that will be a full 13 weeks worth of information, okay? Each module is usually going to be 13 videos, if not, you know, 13 plus one sometimes. So with that, my friends, um, I am going to link in the description box a couple of books that I'm going to be referring to in future episodes. This way, if you want to order them, you can do so and have them with you. You know, if you don't buy the Kindle version, you can buy a paperback version. It takes a little while to get to you. So um, with that, you know, I want to make a couple of book re recommendations. Those links will be Amazon affiliate links. When you use them or if them you, you use them to purchase the books that I'm going to recommend, I do earn a few pennies, <laughs> a very small uh, percentage commission on um, something that you buy that I link through an Amazon affiliate link literally it's like you know 10 cents or something like that so um don't think that i'd be making a bazillion dollars through amazon links because they don't i just put them there for your convenience basically um with that my friends hope to see you in the next video happy witches new year it's all souls day on november 1st merry we did meet Mary, we will part until we marry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye.